Hey everyone, Josh here from Fresh Start Customs, and today we're going to be showing you the new pass-through slot feature. Um, this is the new beta software that has been out for a little while. I've been testing this out for a couple weeks now, um, and I've tested a few of them. I haven't done too many, just because it takes a long time if you want to do actual engraves on it, obviously, since it's a lot larger. But we're going to go ahead and show you um, this sword. Uh, I made a quick pass-through test sword here that I'm going to show you how this works and how you can even expand your current designs into the uh, new pass-through beta software. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we've got this little sword here. And um, what I'm going to do is click these three dots. And we're going to click the Pro Pass-Through Beta feature. We're going to turn that on. And as you can see, we've got this whole new looking outline here. So anything past the dashes is where it's going to do your cutoff for your um, pass through. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sword here. And we're going to expand this sword larger. And I'm going to get an idea of roughly how tall this thing is here. Um, so right now it's 18 inches tall. That's getting pretty tall. Um, Obviously, I could turn that sideways and still fit it in the Glowforge itself. So I'm going to go a little bit bigger here. We're going to go... I'm going to just stop right about 24. I'm actually going to just manually type this in just so I know it's right on 24. And there we go. So we've got 24 inches tall for our height here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring this over to the edge of the board just so I don't waste... A huge amount of material obviously I'm still gonna waste quite a bit on this um, but I just want to show you guys this feature because everybody's been asking for it um, that looks pretty good right there I have yet to select the material um, this material is the maple from Menards but what I do here is I actually choose the thick maple plywood uh, proof grade material and as you can see that shrunk down a little bit and it'll change again after I do my set autofocus. But right there looks good. I'm going to just be on the safe side. This machine is usually dead on accurate. Um, so I could go off to the right some more. But we're going to waste some wood here and uh, show you guys this feature. That way you can see what I'm seeing. Um, basically, before you even get started, you're going to want to take your um, trays off. The actual pass-through trays off of your machine. And then what you're going to do after you take the pass-through trays is you're going to slide the material from the back to the front. And then um, you can just let it sit up to the front edge of the machine. Um, that way you don't waste as much material. But for me, I just push the wood through the front slot a little bit just to help stabilize the wood and make it flatter. And then um, I'll throw up a picture here of <laughs> how I added uh, some stabilization to the back because I don't have like a roller right now or anything like that. Um, so all I did is I took this little table and my uh, past projects drawers here and my camera equipment bag here and just kind of propped it up. That way I don't have to hold it while it's going. And um, so let's go back to this sword. So I just made this sword real quick. We had the cut lines on the outside. If you see, I can highlight it here and the score lines on the inside. I'm not going to do an actual engrave, but this does work for an engrave, and it does work for uh, rasterized images too, believe it or not. So that's awesome. Um, I can do this in another video and show you how this will work in a rasterized image as well. I probably won't cut anything in that video, but I'll show you that in the next video here. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on the cut. And if you have been hearing noises, I do have the vent to open. So the, it is kind of noisy with cars going past, and the machine is on too. So if you heard that, that's what that is. So let's go, and we're going to go ahead and get uh, started here. What you're going to do is we're gonna, going to do our set focus first, just like you always would. And the machine is going to go over there. I don't know if you could actually hear the machine. I do have a, the new microphone, so hopefully that's reducing noise here. Um, so after it sets focus, it's going to take a little bit to set focus. I think it's going across now. Um, 
while we're waiting on that, I'm just going to say I did not mask this either, and this is non-proof grade material. This is just me selecting proof grade, and I'm going to change the settings here in just a second. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's ready. It's done uh, calibrating here. So the cut line, I'm going to do 130 speed, full power. And then for the inside, I need to change this to the score line. Sorry about that. And I usually leave that on proof grade for the score lines and for the engraves. So just for future reference, if you wanted to know my settings, this is what I usually use for quarter inch material. Um, so now that we have our score line in the center here and the cut line on the outside over here, um, we're going to go ahead and hit print. And you want to leave the material in the machine at all times. Do not open the lid after it's done doing this first round. And then I'll explain the next round after this. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll flip to that camera and show it printing. And I'm sorry for the awkward angle. Um, I couldn't put the camera directly in front of the machine since we're using the pass through this time. So let's go ahead and get started here. All right, you guys. So as you've seen, I hit print here. Um, it says it's going to take three minutes and nine seconds for just this part that comes up to the dash line. So let's go ahead and print that off and then we'll show you how it's going to combine here in just a second afterwards. I'm not sure if you guys can actually hear me over the uh, inline fan that's running right now. I assume that you would be able to hear me still because it isn't that loud. Um, as you can see, it is currently cutting through the uh, wood um, on just this one side. I'm going to have to go around the back here so you might not hear me for a little bit while I adjust the uh, next run through. But I'll go ahead and explain that right after it's done cutting through. I just wanted you guys to know what was happening here. All right, you guys, so as you can see, I'm going to wait for the fan to power down here so I, you can hear me a little bit better. All right, so the fan is now powered down. Um, as you can see, I did not move the material at all. Um, and as you can see off to the right here, it says do not move your material or open the lid. Um, they're taking pictures right now, so this is going to be the next section in the print. So we're going to wait for this to finish, and then um, sooner or later it's going to tell us to move this. Um, so right now, the machine is going over and taking its pictures. I can hear it moving now. So once this is done, um, I'm going to go ahead and move the material through. It'll be probably quiet here for a little bit while I move it through, since I have to go behind the machine and behind the microphone. So just a heads up on that, I may just insert some music here for you guys. Um, or I might just crop it in. So whatever you get, that's what you get. Um, and right now, um, you'll see on your machine, it does like a big flash of light when it takes those pictures. And it's trying to align the machine, knowing where that cut's going to be. Um, so now I think it's just homing back over. And um, once it's done uh, here, it should go. Yeah, there you go. So it wants you to pull the materials about 8 inches towards you. And you got to make sure there's at least a three inch gap from the front of the door. That way it can, it can take a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, you guys. So as you can see, I didn't actually open the door. Um, I just slid the material through. Um, and we're going to go from there. It's probably more than three inches, but I'm just being cautious. So it's just going to take a little bit longer and cut multiple cuts here. Um, I have had issues with this in the past, so that's why I'm being as cautious as possible here. And as you can see, it's going to do the new alignment here based on where it took pictures previously and trying to take the pictures again where it took the pictures at before. So this is going to automatically align. You don't want to move the material or um, lift your lid at all in this process. And this will take quite a while, so I'll go ahead and speed this up. But while we're waiting here, I, if you can see off to the right, um, I have the two push pins in there 
and that kind of helps guide the material between the side of the tray and those push pins. Obviously, with the push pins, um, you won't be able to get those in there if you use a full sheet of material. But I'm just using that to, to help keep it as flat as possible while using that little stack that I showed you earlier. So right now it's taking the pictures again, and we'll see when it's done. All right, you guys. So as you can see, um, it has realigned the image with the actual image on the machine. And if you look here, it looks like it did a pretty good job at aligning this up. So uh, I'm pretty happy with how it is. If you're not, you can click retry, uh, a retry alignment. If that doesn't work, you can align it manually by manually adjusting this. But um, so far, I, what I've seen is it works really well. Um, it might be off by like a micrometer here, um, but it works pretty well. So we're going to go ahead and continue here. This looks nice. And I'm going to turn the fan back on for this process so it can cut. Um, so we'll see you guys after that. And one last thing is you do have to manually hit the print button when you're ready to print too. Alright you guys, so same thing here. I'm waiting for the fan to power back down just so you can hear me better. There we go, the fan is down. You can probably hear the machine calibrating now, the little ticking, if you can, uh, with this new microphone. Um, and it's going to take more pictures. This is going to take another, like, three to five minutes for it to take pictures. And then we're going to move the material again. I'm just going to fast forward through all of this because this is exactly what we did last time. And hopefully we'll have enough room to finish this sword off with the third um, take here. And then we'll be good to go. All right, you guys, so I shifted this forward. We're going to go ahead and hit continue. I'll speed up the uh, camera loop again, and we'll see when it's uh, done uh, rearranging this here. All right, you guys, so uh, as you can see, um, I've got the material aligned now, and uh, it, that looks pretty good still. It looks like it may be off by a smidge. I'm not going to realign it. I think this is going to look fine, especially just for a test piece here. Um, and one thing I did want to note, the last one, you could, you could see a smidge off, um, but it was still attached to the last one with these score lines. I expect that to probably happen again. Um, on this one just based on what it sees, uh, but that's pretty darn close and it's pretty hard to be pretty accurate Especially if you're gonna do it manually um, This is a lot better than manually, so I'm gonna go ahead and continue from here We're gonna finish this off and I'll show you guys what it looks like All right, you guys so I'm shutting down the fans again We're gonna wait for those to cool down so you can hear me again. and We'll go from there All right, so as you guys could see there, um, it did show that it was cooling down just like it would at the very end of any print. Um, and it now tells you that you made something magical and you're done. So now you can just hit dismiss um, and it'll ask you to take a survey. Um, I'll go ahead and fill that out later, but that's pretty much it. Let me go ahead and throw this over to another transition of me showing you the full sword. Um, we basically made this two foot sword Super easy through the pass through. No manually dicing and taking apart and then printing multiple times in a row. That's super annoying. That's why I've never made a video on the pass through before. It gets complicated. It would just cause a lot of headaches for people. So this is going to be coming out to everybody sometime in the future. Right now it is in beta. Um, only a few people have had it and I've seen more and more people getting it lately. So I thought it would be best to make the video as it comes out to everybody. Um, I hope this helped you out. As you can see, this is a full two foot. We're going to, um, I'll show you this, uh, me holding it here. Um, it turned out awesome. Um, if you can, you can probably barely see, um, the score lines are a little off. I mean, like, barely. 
And it's basically um, what you would expect if you would pause the machine and then start the machine again. Just that little flare up uh, when it cuts to the right. So that's pretty much it, you guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope this helped you out with the new um, pass-through beta software, which will be available to every pro user in the future. This will not be available to basic machines. Um, if you modify your basic machine, you will not have this either. So just a heads up on that. Um, I highly doubt they're going to make that available for um, basic because that is a safety issue. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like always, uh, like and subscribe if you haven't followed along yet. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time.